What's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. It looks like there is some bad news in regards to Black Ops 6's multiplayer. So that's what we're going to be talking about and discussing in today's video. I know lately there's just been a lot of hype in regards to the upcoming Season 5 update for Modern Warfare 3. So I haven't really been talking about Black Ops 6, but I wanted to make this video because we did have some breaking news and I want to keep you guys up to date on the latest Call of Duty news and information. But if you do find the video helpful or informative, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. We're getting very close to 400k, so I do appreciate it if you guys would hit that sub button. Speaking of the season five update, I did post a video yesterday going over the first official marketing that Call of Duty dropped in regards to an upcoming crossover with Call of Duty and WWE. We talked about the operators, the events, what to expect from it, the leaks that we have. So if you missed that video, I'll have it linked down in the description. Definitely check it out after this one. But anyways, let's go ahead and let's get into it. The first topic that we have is actually MW3 related. I just want to let you guys know real quick that the Jeans Ghost Operator skin is now officially available in the store. It is an operator skin that many of you guys have been looking forward to so i just wanted to let you guys know about that it's going to cost you 1600 cod points brings in the jeans ghost operator skin which literally that's the name that they're calling him following that you get one weapon blueprint for the bow 27 called the obsidian steed and then there's the rest of the bundle comes in with i believe a large decal and an emblem along with a loading screen and this is everything that you need to know in regards to this bundle that is now available now that we got that out of the way let's talk about black ops 6 so the first piece of bad news that you need to know this is something that we actually predict and that is the price increase as a result of Black Ops 6 being in the Xbox Game Pass. So we originally thought that the price increase probably wouldn't happen until around the release of the game, but they've already started the announcement. According to Charlie Intel, he said, breaking Microsoft is increasing the price of the Xbox Game Pass. It starts now for brand new users and will start on September for existing users. So for those of you guys who are waiting until the launch of Black Ops 6 in order to get the Game Pass, you're gonna unfortunately have to start paying the premium right then at the very start. If you were to try to make the membership today, you'll be paying that price. But if you already have the game pass, you don't have to worry for a couple of months, but here's what the new price is set at. So you have the PC game pass went from $9.99, so $10. Now it's $11.99 with a $2 difference every single month. And then the Xbox game pass ultimate, this one has a price increase from $16.99 previously to $19.99 now. And then they also mentioned that the Xbox game pass console tier is no longer available for new subscribers. Now, for those of you guys who are interested in using the Xbox Game Pass in order to access the full Black Ops 6 content, here's what this means for you. If you are on console, that means you're going to need to purchase the Xbox Game Pass Ultimate version, which will cost you $20 a month in order to get multiplayer, campaign, and zombies full access. This means that if you plan on paying for the Xbox Game Pass throughout the entire life cycle of Black Ops 6, you're going to be paying $240 for the entire year for the game and it's only $70. So unless you plan on using it for other games, I don't think it's a good deal at all. And you'd probably be better off spending the money on getting the full actual game itself. And then the second way is if you are on PC and you get the PC game pass, you'll be spending $12 a month in order to access the full thing. So campaign multiplayer and zombies, and that will come up to $144 a year. That same exact thing, probably better off to get the $70 version. And that could save you a a big amount of money unless of course you plan on playing other games that are available in the game pass and it'd probably be a better deal for you now, they're actually introducing a third tier to the xbox game pass and this one is called the new xbox game pass standard tier which will cost $14.99 a month it doesn't include new games day one that means you're not going to have access to black ops 6 but does include back catalog access and online multiplayer access so if you want to play past call of duty titles has games you're able to do that with this tier but you're not able to play black ops 6 now just from this information right here it expands to even more bad news so you may not be on xbox so this may not impact you as much but remember the store bundles the different other store offerings and premium content that call of duty releases throughout the life cycle of black ops 6 will probably end up getting a price increase that means the store operators and maybe even the battle pass these are all going to have an increase in price and that could negatively impact every single player not just those on xbox and that's as a result of the game pass obviously that's not something they're going to officially announce or let us know that they're increasing the prices of store bundles it's just something we're going to have to figure out once the game fully releases and we could compare between mw2 mw3 past call of duty title bundle prices versus what they offer in the store in black ops 6 now considering this video is all about the negatives in regards to black ops 6 there is a little bit more bad news the next topic is we're going to talk about the actual gameplay details itself the very first one being skill-based matchmaking a lot of you guys talked about how skill 
skill-based matchmaking could potentially ruin this Call of Duty. It could also make it an unplayable game, and you're hoping that they would probably tune down or lower the skill-based matchmaking. That is something that Call of Duty has officially announced, and they did confirm that they have no plans on changing it or altering it in any sort of way. They did that blog post during MW3 a couple seasons back where they explained how skill-based matchmaking works. They talked about how the connection, the playlist diversity, the time to a match, the skill performance, platform, voice chat, input device, and recent maps and modes is what causes the skill-based matchmaking to work. And as a result, that's what gets us in the sweatier lobby. So they can't really just turn it off. It's something that we're gonna have to deal with. If you guys recall with MW3, everything wrong that they did with MW2 or people didn't like about MW2, they fixed or altered in MW3. And one of the biggest things was skill-based matchmaking and that went on untouched. So you can expect that they're probably not gonna touch skill-based matchmaking in Black Ops 6, and that's just something to expect or look forward to. Something else that's also bad news, and this is a little bit of breaking news as well, is Verdansk is not gonna be playable at the start of Black Ops 6. If you guys recall, we have that big map schedule where the very beginning of a Call of Duty title will start off with the pre-seasonal content, everything drops in, the multiplayer, that's pretty much it. You get to play that and enjoy that. Then season one comes around and that's when Warzone is introduced into the equation. They bring in a brand new map. The gameplay is integrated with that current Call of Duty and then it goes on and they continuously add content to it, add support bring in resurgence maps later throughout the life cycle, and that's how it goes. Now, unfortunately, this year, it's not gonna work that way. We're expecting Verdansk to launch this upcoming December along with that big map update, which they usually do every December, but it looks like that's not the case because according to Insider Gaming, they got some insider information, and they have confirmed that Verdansk was originally not even planned to return to Call of Duty, but the major reason why they planned on returning it is because Fortnite OG and Fortnite brought back their original map, and what that caused was the big biggest day in history for Fortnite with over 44 million players logging into that game. And you know how Call of Duty is. As soon as Activision saw those numbers, they're like, wait a minute, we got to bring back Verdansk. So they ended up switching up their plans and their schedule later during the year of 2023 and decided to bring back Verdansk but they don't have enough development time. So it's not gonna follow the original schedule they originally planned, and it is gonna be delayed. And you could probably expect that it will still release because they're confirmed right here with, they still plan on bringing it back just during the life cycle of Black Ops 6 as in seasonal content. So it's not something that we're gonna get at the very beginning. They're probably gonna start off by releasing maybe a resurgence map or one of these smaller scale maps, and then they're gonna work their way into the bigger Verdansk map. Hence why we have not seen Battle Royale ranked yet, and they've sort of been holding that off with MW3 because you're not gonna have a big map to enjoy when they end up introducing the Black Ops 6 maps. So that is some unfortunate news in regards to the delay of Verdansk, but other than that, there's a couple of other things that I saw a lot of people were upset about. The very first one was the omnidirectional movement. Every time I talk about this or I mention this, I see a lot of mixed feedback. Some players wanna see this feature, some people really don't want to see it. They feel like this will actually take away from the OG Call of Duty feel. And with this new movement system, it's not going to feel like a Call of Duty title, but it'll feel like you're playing something different. And that's not something that people really want to see. So that's not a type of change that people want. But what are your thoughts and opinions? Do you think that omnidirectional movement is a bad feature? Do you think it could be bad news for Call of Duty? It's definitely a feature that could potentially increase the skill gap among players. So people who focus on it, lock in and try to understand the movement and practice it much more than a player who would just play the game regularly would probably end up having a lot more movement would get more eliminations and as a result would just increase the gap among skilled players versus unskilled players. There's also the thing because this is a controller based game. There's also stick drift and we already have to deal with that a little bit in Call of Duty, but imagine where now that your stick drift is gonna go in every single direction. Players with older controllers may end up being at a disadvantage. Setting up your dead zones may not be correct and all that stuff. So from that, a couple of other problems could arrive. And then there's also the AI assisted movement. Going into the settings and turning on all these controller assisted movements, they will actually do everything for you so you can run jump slide climb mantle all that will be automatically done you don't have to press a single button you literally just have to run towards the direction of a building or an area you want to slide through and it'll do that for you so all you have to do is focus on aiming and shooting and eliminating other players and that's something that people feel like it's a little bit too lazy for call of duty at that point you're not really playing and enjoying the game for yourself the good news is it's completely optional you can turn it on if you want you can turn it off if you want so if you don't like it you don't have to deal with it i don't see it being 
being really that big of a problem, but players were saying that if the game is basically playing for you, this could be bad news for Black Ops 6. But based on all the information that I've given you so far, what are your thoughts and opinions? I still think the pros definitely outweigh the cons when it comes to all the amount of content and the good features that Black Ops 6 has introduced. So overall, it's definitely a game to look forward to. But I just wanted to keep you up to date on all this information. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Be sure to check out yesterday's video if you want to know more about the Season 5 MW3 update. But it's been your boy Trizzo. Thank you guys for tuning in and hopefully I'll be seeing you guys back again. Peace.